<laughs> we are live this morning. We've just been out for a surf. We've just been down to uh, to D Bar here on the Gold Coast. Had a really fun little surf this morning, and it's inspired us to come back and talk about surfing on rail. So, do you want to do you want to sort of lead us into this? We've got a couple of videos that we're going to show, but uh, the reason why it came about was because of something that I did in, in the water. You you go ahead. I'm gonna drink some drink. So. There's a lot check on YouTube. of talk about surfing on rail, being on a tow edge or a heel edge or um, going rail to rail. However, I think the average surfer has no idea of what that means or what it represents or what a rail turn feels like or what it looks like or why you should do it. Um, so it's kind of like this thing that gets said and like, oh yeah, but... There's no understanding around it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Look, I, I think, I think now that I that I do understand it now, it's something which, when you very first started saying it, there was a few things that I couldn't work out in my in my okay. head because you were because you were like going start the turn earlier or this sort of thing, get on rail. I thought I was getting on rail, but then I wasn't getting on rail. I had a little brain fart. So. Imagine you're driving a car, all right, and you're turning, you, you, you lean into the car a little bit, but the car never really leans. The car yeah. stays flat. But then if you've got onto a motorbike and you take a corner and you start leaning and getting the bike closer to the ground, that feeling of, is it centrifugal force where because you're going at speed, you don't fall off the bike mm -hmm. and, and you hold the turn, there's something kind of exhilarating and, and nice about yeah. that. Okay, so it, it's almost like when people learn how to surf, they play it safe, and it's almost like they're driving cars. And then the evolution from that would be like riding a motorbike. And then pro surfing would almost be the freedom of like flying an aeroplane, where there, it's just non-restrictive, and you can go where you want to go, up, down, left, mm -hmm. right, you can do whatever. So there's, there's definitely this progression. But um, trying to tell you what that feels like and you having never experienced <laughs> it. Yeah, yeah. It, it's really, really weird. So let, let's go back in history then. Yeah, let's, let's go back in history, yeah. Three years ago, uh, we got some footage of yourself surfing. We do. And I would like you to try to remember and then tell the audience what it was that you were working on to impress people. Try to impress yeah. people. <laughs> okay, uh, just before we do jump into the iPad, uh, Ozzy's on this morning. So Ozzy was actually out surfing with us at D Bar this morning. Ozzy was somebody who was surfing on rail. Um, Ozzy's been out over 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 here because he's normally over in, on, in in Western Australia. So he's been over here over here for a few weeks. So hey, we have a good, good good few surfs with 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 Ozzy. Waste for speed equals turns. Okay, right. Let's um, let's before. Before, before we jump into this, I just want to remind you that if you haven't checked it out yet, Nico has just finished. I think it was posted less than 24 hours ago. We posted up the, the journey of Karen, who got into surfing when she was 50. Nico has, has put a really good edit together on this. I, I, I personally think it's probably one of the best edits that, that we've done. It's a, it's a, it's a real, so it's, it's one of the Ombi tales, so it's told as a story. Um, it's had, so it's, it's had a number of views already, but we'd love it to, to, to really gain some momentum this video. So if, if after you've finished watching this, make sure you stay and watch us first. But after we've finished, then go and check out the, 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 the latest video that we would have posted on YouTube after this one. So this one will be now, and there's one before. It's all about Karen. She started surfing at 50. She caught the wave of her life at 68. Absolutely amazing, amazing video. And it's just a really cool little feel-good story that will make you want to go out and surf. So that being said, let's, let's jump into... Some the iPad now. Some older video. Yeah, one thing I didn't do. Can you can you talk about surfing on rail for a second? Because the iPad, for some reason, is not showing up. Okay. Um, well, here. Here's here's another interesting thing on top of the rail surfing. Right? I made you a board that is a five foot seven. Kind you're of, you're like six one tall. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was when I first made you that board, you had a problem catching waves on it. I did, let me get back to full screen. Yeah, I did have a problem catching waves. Okay. I loved it in the wave pool because I knew exactly where I was to sit. Yep. But then suddenly taking this really short board out in the ocean where it was a little bit unpredictable because you might get sort of pulled out a little bit by the rip. You're trying to keep your place right. 
But then I would always fight. And also you're fighting more in the water to try and get the waves because you're, you're tossling with other people. But today, you went and sat further out, almost where a guy in a mini male was sitting. Yeah. All right. And caught the same waves that he caught on a five foot seven board, bearing in mind you're six foot. Yeah, it comes up to my chin. So if I stand up, the board comes. So comes it's almost comes a whole foot shorter. Yeah. You're saying that my, that my head is a foot long. <laughs> Al- yeah, almost. I said almost. That's one big heed. <laughs> okay. So my, my question there, what changed? What in your, changed? In your perception of, of wave catching on smaller boards. Well, we, we had this, I, I was speaking to you about this board the other day. So this is currently my favourite board. I absolutely love this board. Hated it initially, apart from in the pool. I just couldn't surf it in the ocean. Now I've started to absolutely love it in the ocean. It's like riding a skateboard on water. My perce- I think that, that the difference is, you've always said that I surf better on my finless and on my soft tops than I do on my high performance boards. Yeah. And I think it's because I approach any surfing that I do when I'm on those boards, I approach it with an element of just playing around. Because this board's so small, I actually see it as a really playful board. And so my mindset is different going into the water when I'm on the smaller board. Okay. Now that I've figured out whereabouts I need to sit to catch a wave on that board, I'm now not so worried about that. So I'm being a lot more playful with it. So my, my head was somewhere different. Okay. So because it's quite a short board and it's quite wide and it's quite flat and it's really, really fast, if you try to do a turn with the board flat, it would just slide out. You'd have no control. So not it's yet. taught you to put it on rail and to turn a little bit less. So you've got to hold the turn, not force the turn. Okay? Yeah. So you're, you're a lot more gentle on the, on the controls as it were. But when you do that, the thing gives you so much more feeling. So now you're hunting bigger, better waves to, to make yourself feel more. Yeah. So what's actually happened is the rail surfing's made you tune in to how the board feels and how it wants to be surfed. And now you're trying to catch better waves. So it's actually motivated you to sit in the pocket to catch bigger waves. Yeah. Well, initially, it scared you. Yeah. Because you surfed it flat initially. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's mind-blowing. So, so I, th- I think what you said then, but, but, but that also then relates to the fact that I now see it, that the, my mindset towards riding that board is one of playful. So I'm not holding yeah. so much tension. So I do, it is easier for me to get it on, on rail. But let's, let's show you, so this is back before I got involved at all with, with, with Ombi. Uh, if, if you've been following Ombi, then you'll have seen this video before. But this is, uh, this is me... This has been now four four years ago. <laughs> I reckon four years ago, maybe even longer. I love that. You can do all the breaking down on this. Can we go to the first one then? You can do it. You can do it. You can take whatever you want. Okay, let's go. So <laughs> None of it's good. So what I'm going to say is, you surf underhand. So look at your hands. They almost you drop them to like below your knees. Can I just so? Can I just ask a quick question here? Yes. Because to me. Once upon a time, I would have said that that was surfing, that was surfing on rail because I feel like the board's doing this. No, not not at all. But this is what I'm trying to say: is my perception of surfing on rail has now changed. But that's, I would have gone. Oh, I am surfing on rail. No. So the line that you need to take, you need to go that way and and kind of turn. And you need to be on rail for longer. It's pointless being on rail for like one second. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, like, you don't ride the motorbike and lean one and, and you go flat again. Yeah. Y- you lean and you've got to wait for the bike to finish the turn. When you do that, what actually happens is because there's less friction on the board, the board will accelerate through the turn. But what you do here, you lose speed on the turn. So if, we, if I just go back 10 seconds, all right? So let's watch the turn. So you're on rail flat and right there, can you see all this, the pushback. So this, this foam over here, um, there, is you stalling and the pushback. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you got a little burst of speed, but what I'm gonna say is you started over there and you ended over there. So what you did is you went from being on the foam in a good part of the way with this energy, but mid face to on the shoulder where you've got less energy, but you're still mid-face. Yeah. But the only difference is now you're pushing water. Okay, so I think what you did today, let me just change this to a different colour. Um, 
you started to do these type of lines. I, I'm going to say, unfortunately, we don't have any footage um, of today. We, have, we were actually speaking the other day that we need to do a, a, a segment or a video on my surfing now versus, versus this. But yeah, so, sorry, carry on. I was just filling some dead space. In. So the, the, the point of difference today is that figure eight that you were doing. Yeah. And because your board was on rail, you were going twice as fast and you had twice the amount of control and twice the amount of speed. Yeah. And twice the amount of froth. Yeah, so much fun. So I, I wanted to ask you, this surfer here, three years ago, Yeah. what was your intention? What did you want to do to, to make you feel that you were killing it out there? Okay, so back at this, it's a full screen. So back when the, when this footage here was taken, this was before I, I had had any coaching at all. So I had I had one other coaching session before I then got introduced to to to, to Clay. But at, at that time, before any coaching, I thought that if I just, for me, it was all about like the, the, only, the only way that I can describe it is is really using the legs, like come down with the legs and and try and kick the board around and it was it was all about. How hard you can push. Yeah, from it was almost like from, from the knees downwards, I felt like that's about all my surfing was from. And when I was taking off, I was, I was, I suppose in my head, I was sort of thinking, just push as much as possible, push as much as possible, push as much as possible. Okay, so keeping that frame of mind, when you watch a pro surf like a Mick Fanning, he makes it look effortless. Mm. Okay, but the amount of water displacement that you visually see yeah. looks huge. So you think, wow, he's got to be pushing so bloody hard to displace that much yeah. water. Yeah. But what it is, because the board's on rail, his spray goes vertically, whereas someone that surfs flat puts the brakes on and yeah. the spray goes horizontally. So it, would you say that then it's an illusion of power? Think about the turns that you did today when you're going twice as fast. I'd, so yeah, I think the illusion of power, but it isn't an illusion though, because there is actually genuine power in there, but the power is achieved through something else rather than being... <laughs> okay, so, so check this out, right? This is we, we have got some Mick Fanning that I can bring up if you so want. If I, if I extend my leg, turn's finished. Oh yeah, yeah. so this is how, how, how we were trying to describe it before. I, I, I forgot, yeah. Um, it okay. was, that was how I surfed. It was... Like, uh, uh, yeah. All right, push uh, on the tail, the board's doors, yeah. and you see a little bit of spray. But I could almost like twist and keep twisting. So in other words, if I was in a pool and I just kept twisting like this, I would have a huge fan. Yeah. But if I pushed water in the pool, I would displace a little bit of water. But then as soon as my arms extended, the turn's finished. But I could keep twisting and therefore the illusion of power is far greater, yeah. plus with the angle of the board being on rail, the spray is going way higher. So back here, I think if this was a clock, that, that, um, this is gonna be really interesting. Whoops, a big clock, all right? And let's just say that that's 12. I think you only used to see a point on the clock, whereas what's happening now with your surfing. I didn't, I didn't see a clock, I just saw one way. Now I, think, I feel much. that you're seeing that. Yeah. So you, you you actually you're going through all the numbers in the clock. You're going yeah. through like one, two, three, four. Where previously you'd see one and extend on one and get stuck on one. Yep. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it makes perfect sense. Cool. So so let's just play through a few more of these. Yes, yeah, so I see. That's the point. Then you push and you get stuck. Yeah. Let's take it off slow motion, see what's next. Lots of stress paddling to get into it. We won't go into that today. Oh, head dip. Look at that, and got, and got his hair washed. Bit of a claim, do you see my barrel? So I lost a lot of speed there. Yeah, do you know why? <laughs> yeah, because my surfing was shocking. Okay, let's go back to that and see if we can actually break this down yeah. as to why you lost some speed. Well, I stood on the back foot. And this was how I used to surf. It was like, okay, stand on the back foot and rah! Let's go super slow. <laughs> okay, so it's, watch the nose lift up. And then the board goes, and you've got all your weights in the board's flat. So right now there's maximum drag. 
Okay, not yeah. only the surface of the board, but also the three fins in the water. But then also, you made yourself really heavy, so you're kind of sinking. Yep. So if you were to, but okay, look at this as well. I, th I think this board was a six six two. If you look at where you're looking, you, you're looking at the future. You look at how short that distance is. Yeah, but that's but this that first line that you drew that was how that was how I always used to surf. Okay, so I want to I'm going to zoom in and show you something else. Look at this. This is also pretty interesting. Look at how, how far you've travelled. So if I, if I map that distance that your board travelled, it's pretty darn far, right? So you had a lot of speed there. And look how short that distance is. So had you have just taken a different line and held the turn longer, you had far, you had more speed than you needed to, to go up. So you, you almost kind of wasted that speed because you're looking down the line surfing flat. Yeah. So what's happening with like Mick Fanning's, they're using that speed and they almost trying to control the speed now because they've got too much of it. Yeah. Where you feel like I don't have enough because I've got to get around the section. So then you're looking for a faster board, bigger fins, and you're looking for all these little add-on tweaks to um, try and make your flat surfing better. Something really, just as you were saying that then, because one thing that comes up time and time again is, is board size, what, what, what fins should I use? You saying then, about me thinking about fins, I don't think I've thought about what fins I'm using in my board. Like you saying it then actually reminded me, do I actually even think about my fins anymore? Not which, anymore. Which, no, I just don't, I just put in the ones I've got at home. But, okay, so this is interesting. We've gone off on a tangent here, but let's go. Well, let's go, let's just okay. go wherever this is taking us. So people that surf flat think about their fins a lot because it's almost like if you stood in a skateboard, you'd, you'd want to tic-tac to get the board to move. Yeah. All right. So then, if you're surfing flat, you're thinking about your fins to give you your drive. But when you start surfing on rail, the conversation now is, what kind of rail shape do I need? Like, if the rail's really thick, if it pushes in, will it pop me out? Yeah. Is it going to give me a delay? How round is it? If it's if it's too knife edge, it might like it might be very jerky, but if it's nice and round, it might be nice and round and smooth. Mm. And I actually think that now you're becoming less of a fin connoisseur and more of a rail connoisseur. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I've definitely started to change my, uh, my, my, uh, my understanding. I'm just trying to think, actually. I think the last few times I... So I've gone out on that, that small board the last few times, and I, and I said to you this morning when I rocked up that I took out my high-performance round tail. Yeah. I took that out at Snapper the other day and I could feel that it didn't, it, the waves weren't quite enough to give that board the punch that it needed to. And when, when I needed to generate a little bit of speed because I was worried somebody was going to drop, on, drop in on me, I wasn't able to do it on that one there like I was the other one. So now I can feel the difference in, I'm now, I'm, I'm now noticing a lot more difference in the boards that I'm riding. So not only are you a rail connoisseur, but you're also a tail connoisseur. Because now um, you found that the, the broader square tail gave you more drive and more push. Yeah. But the round tail gives you more turning. So suddenly you could rock up at the beach and because you're a connoisseur on rails and tails and shapes, <laughs> right? I'm you quite could, a connoisseur. Well, it's like pairing, let's just say, um, meat and wine. Or, yeah. You know, you can pair your equipment for the conditions and how yeah. you want to surf and what kind of feeling you want to get. So suddenly um, you've got a lot more options as to um, what kind of a day you're going to have and what kind of surfing you want to do and what kind of mood you're in. Yeah. If you've got lots of energy, I want to go super fast, all right, I can get the, the wide tail and smaller board and I can go really, really fast. If you're in a bit of a lazy day, I might take the mid-length and, and a bit more cruisy. Yeah. You know, so um, that's kind of when I rock up at the beach, I think about how I'm feeling and, and what kind of waves I want to surf and how I want to surf. Yeah. Let's, um, let's bring this video back up again, see what else we can gather from this. So we're then going to jump to another video in a moment, which is a bit... Oh no, this is, this, is, this, is, this is it. So this is a little bit This is a little bit further on. This is after a little bit of time at Ombi. This is still old footage. So I'm going to say that that's still backward surfing. Did you know how? See? Well, it, it just looks like backward. It looks okay. like my, my foot's pushing on the back. So first mistake, um, there's no bottom turn. So you've rushed out into All the right. shoulder. Uh, let's go back. Uh, let's go super slow. Let's go back so that everyone can... So see where the nose is facing, down the line. This is one of the first boards that you ever made me. One of the yeah. first curvy ones. Yeah. 
This is when you wouldn't let me, Clay would not let me ride a thruster. So he it's, only put me it's on quads. It's in slow mo, so let's play it and I'll. I'll Hang on a minute, let me go right back to the beginning of this clip. There we go. It was a bit jerky. Okay, so the wave's drawing off. Go to the bottom of the wave and bottom turn. Okay, so that's not quite the bottom, that's more sort of mid ish. Now go up the wave. It's very projected out into the flats, isn't it? Yep. Now, at that point over there... Oh, I'm like, like this. <laughs> All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you something. Let's just zoom into this. If I stack all your joints, so you've got your head, bum, ankle, it looks like all your weight is centred on that yeah. back foot. Okay, so what that does is it makes the board... It's Okay, if you're going to learn to ride a skateboard, you'd tic-tac because you've got no speed. You want to tic-tac a turn. But if you're going down the hill with speed, you would never use the tic-tac. So you've generated a lot of speed. You, you kind of want to get on rail and turn it. So, Ant, mm. today, we're in the water, and I, I did this to you. It was, like, it was, it was bang, right? <laughs> okay, let me, let, me, let me come full screen. So, so when you're at seven with Clay, you catch a wave, you're, you're, you're going to go and do your own thing, and then all of a sudden... Clay, at the corner of your Clay, bar. Clay just suddenly just waves and just makes a hand gesture just at you. Appears. And in the space of that, you've got to try and work out what it is that he's talking about. So Anne was flying past. I was like, <laughs> and you did it. And what happened? Oh, it was, it was, it was like next level. So I, I thought that you, you had already complimented me, which I, I, I always appreciate whenever you would compliment uh, any, of my, any of my turns. But I'd done a turn beforehand, which, had, which you said, oh, that was really nice. You held it, came all the way back. And I said you got your hand up on the rebound. Yeah, got hand up on the rebound. So, so, you, so you're doing figure eights. Yeah. Then this this next wave, I took off, and then you said do this with your hands. And so all of a sudden, I I knew what Clay wanted me to do. So I went poop with my hands and turned them more. And all of a sudden, it was like I went into turbo charge on this turn. It went tighter, and it was like when where that's a turn before was like it went and it was like vroom, vroom. <laughs> I had no idea, first of all, what happened. I was a big smile on my face. I've got a big smile on my face now, but it, it, it just, the whole thing felt different. It, so there was a sudden bit of acceleration. All of a sudden, I was able to see higher up on the wave than I'd ever seen before. It brought every, that figure of eight that you talk about of going, I'm, yeah, it's from, I could do the old Spider Man thing, couldn't I? But the uh, figure of eight sideways, I could feel that it was starting to do more of this now because I could see more yeah. there as I was coming back around again. More angles. And the other big thing, one of the things that, the, that, I've, that I've found is that when I am doing cutbacks, I'm, try, I'm hoping that this makes sense with my arm as I'm doing it, but when I'm hitting the foam and then coming back, quite often I'm finding that it feels like the board's being picked up by the white water and then put it back down again, which means that I'm flat when I'm doing the rebound. So I do that and then I kind of come back out. Today, when you said do this, when I came around like that, it almost made the arms come up like this, which then meant that as I transitioned, I went on rail and I felt a completely different... A different squirt. Um, yeah, pa power away from, from the foam because I was on rail instead. So there wasn't this motion, it was... So, so that motion that you're talking about is actually your fin drifting. So it's, it's disconnected and then it connects and then you go forward. Yeah. Whereas because you're on rail, you rebounded and the wave pushed you in the direction that you're rebounding. Yeah. So it's kind of like the, there was no drift but there was just tr more drive and more speed out of the turn. Yeah. Interestingly, though, so the, the, the thing, the only thing that made the difference was that, just that. It was nothing at all to do with my legs, my feet. So the one thing which a few years ago I was focused on, which was me kicking this leg out, so as I said before, from the knee downwards, I couldn't be any further from whereabouts it actually needs to be surfed from, which is the wrists. I was at the yeah. extreme other end of my body, to surf. Yeah. So it's, and I can just feel the difference. The second I just did that, it was amazing. So your style just improved like tenfold when you did that. Yeah, there we go. Okay, there, so is, there, 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 there is hope for, so for all intermediate surfers an, yet. Here's an analogy. Imagine that you're, uh, you've got a, a bar of soap and it's in the bath and the bar of soap's wet and you just flung it and it just goes zzzz and does this whole bunch of figure yeah. eights I used to do that as a kid, my mum went mental at me. Yeah, so like it, it'll slide around the bath really nicely. That's what your turn looked like, where there's no friction, right? However, 
your old surfing is like you're taking the bar of soap and you're almost like trying to wax the, the bar, like. Yeah, okay, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, so rather than just being nice and flowy around, yeah. it was. <coughs> now, <coughs> when, you, when the bar of soap goes around the bath, it, it, it actually banks. It doesn't stay flat. When you, it, it takes the shape of the bath. Yeah. Okay, so by you bending your wrists, you started to match the angle of the wave and take the shape of the wave, the same as what the bar of soap did. Mm. And that's why your turns felt and looked so good. Now, going back to this. Okay, let's go, let's go back to the iPad because there, there, there is a point in time where I start to... So this whole thing of me getting to, to, to the point today where I suddenly felt something completely different um, okay. has involved me falling. And this is... Go on, you go. We'll, we'll, we'll get to the other bit in a minute. Look at your back wrist. Stead flat. Yeah. Okay, so there's no way like that this. that <laughs> bar of soap is going to go around that wave. But today it was two. It was it was the, it was yeah, the, the it was two wrists. It, was it wasn't two. one, it was two. So, um, I can't really go surfing again now. Because of what your hands are doing there, I'm, I'm interested to see what unfolds. Okay, so even over there, it's still quite flat. Like if I put a stick between your hands. Yeah, right, and, and so the board's not. Yeah, the board's flat. So major difference today with those hands coming up. Even there, it's flat. Okay, you start getting a little bit on rail, but then you go flat. Okay, so, yeah. so you had a little squirt of rail, and then you go flat and your board pushes water now. And see there, that's on the foam rebound. Your board's getting swallowed. Yeah, Whereas and that's, that's when I used to get the turbulence on the back. Yeah, whereas today, your board is more at sort of that angle. So the phone's able to push. Exactly. <sighs> Great. Um, understanding, slowly. And hopefully, you're understanding too. So yeah, that, that was kind of like a big moment for us. Can we go full screen again? Yeah, yeah, it was. I mean, let, me, let me find, you, you talk about that there for a minute, because I just want to find something else in this video. So, well, the, the interesting thing, this is not the first time that I've asked you to, to wrists. I mean, there, there's been countless times where... Oh, that was terrible, Anthony. Hang on. You were stoked on this then. I <laughs> know. But the, so, uh, so, let's go full screen. No, there, so, right? Yeah, yeah. But I, th but I think that this is a really important thing, is that I've actually really embraced the journey. So, so each time I get, I get a little bit more frothed out. And today I felt something completely different. So now, so now I look at this and go, oh, why didn't I do that before? But it's all part of the journey. And I so, think that So that, here's that, you riding my twin fin, which is a 510, yeah. which is, again, probably not the right board for you, but it's super responsive. Yeah. This, in actual fact, this was a board, if, you, if you've been following on me for a while, you know that I, I, I did one video where I came back and I was so stoked about... The, you just said uh, you, you found your perfect board or yeah, something. Yeah, I found the perfect board. So at the time, this was the perfect board. Now it's not. <laughs> now it's a different one. Okay, next wave is, is what we're looking at. So this board here. So the speed difference there is huge. Mm. So let's, let's go backwards in time here. Um, You've got a good little selection of, I didn't realise there was this many selections of, of me attempting to do cutbacks and get on rail. But look at that there, it's like, it's down here. Okay, so the first thing, everything's stacked on that back foot. So you're starting the, the turn. Can, sorry, just with this here, with the back foot, because it looks like my head's over my front foot. So some people might go, but I'm, I'm putting the weight down on the front foot, but it's not, it is actually on the you, back you foot. You've got your hips on the back foot. Yeah. So look, you can do a back foot turn, but it's gonna stall. Yeah. So before you do the turn, you almost wanna go rails, okay? Then if you did push on the back foot, the board would pivot around towards the foam, whereas right now you're just stalling. Mm. Okay, you can see your wrist is flat and your hands are flat. Yep. Let's go super slow. Okay, so you look at the foam, hold the turn, hold it, hold it, hold it, tension in the arms, and you stop looking at the foam. But I also couldn't see, oh, sorry, because I'm, I'm looking at this now going, what was the difference today? That, that whole, uh, my left arm is, is getting in my way, so I can't actually see up, up around. But the second I did this today, it opened up that, that shoulder so that I could then go whoop. Can you see how? Your, your arms are going in two different directions. Yeah. So your, your board's a little confused as to what it should do. Okay? And you, you don't really commit. Let's change it. You don't commit to that because you start looking there. Okay, yeah. Okay, so if you, if you watch this turn play out now, so 
you're going, you're following the left hand. I should stay looking. But then you don't commit, and you start to follow the right hand. So now your board goes flat, yeah. and your board's like, well, what the hell should I have done? Um, you, you're making me force and, and choose between the left and the right. It doesn't quite know what to do. Um, just, just very quickly here. Can you hold that proper position with the hands for a few seconds so we can properly look at it? So just for a few seconds, can you hold the proper position of the hands? Okay, so this is really easy. Um, Are you going to show it? Yeah. With your hands? Okay, yeah. right, I have a screen then. If, you, then, if you're in the passenger seat of the car and you stick your hand out the window, where's the thing? All right, yeah. this is up, that's down, that's left, that's right. And all you've got to do is look at the line that you want to take and then follow left. That, that's all. As soon as you do this, your head will start feeling like you're gonna fall back. All right? And that's you starting to accelerate down the ramp. Yeah. So a skateboarder, when they drop into a, a ramp, they go head forwards to drop in. So even if you off are going, by doing this, you're starting to go head that way, which is what a skateboarder's doing, but then you, you almost catch yourself into a head forward position. And that's how you're doing the turn. Yeah. So you want to feel like you're falling on that turn. Okay. That's, that's the speed and the acceleration and the drive that you're going to get. Yeah. And I think one of the big mistakes that, that, that we do see a lot of beginner and intermediate surfers make is that thing of standing up and this happens. So like I'm doing with, with my arms and the iPad here, this arm's going either way. We see that so much with people out there when they're surfing, when in actual fact you need to try and... Whoosh, and be, be both arms pointing to where you want to go, rather than... Oh. Ah. So, so imagine this. Imagine your hands are on the board, all right? And the wave's coming. Imagine if you wanted to push your board to the beach. Y you would do this. Yeah. Okay, you, you wouldn't... Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. So basically, if you th threw your board towards the beach with the direction, with the lips breaking, you, you're going to get twice as much speed from that. Well, I, think, I think part of it... Um, Thanks for asking that, that question. I think, I think part of it there as well comes from you're on a moving object that goes, that's going forwards and you're trying to keep your balance. And so naturally, to keep our balance, we, it's, it's almost like a, a knee-jerk reaction to do this. So it's almost like you have to train yourself. Well, so, so here's the thing. When the wave starts picking up, all right, you can't keep your head on top. Your head sh you should be going sideways to maintain your balance. But everyone's going up flat trying to be in balance but then because the board's flat and the way the board wants to then fall that way and then you're trying to keep your balance over all these different obstacles mm. whereby if you did get inverted and go more sideways central fugal force would keep your balance and the speed would give you the balance yeah it's, it's crazy but when you try to get balance in that situation you don't have it yeah but when you go out of balance you get balance let's take me out superstar i think there's one where so i, I think i mentioned before that was slightly better. So, so this is this is kind of like the whole progress of of of. Uh, let me, can, can I get that? Let me see if I can get rid of that. There we go. I think there's one. Okay, so if you have a look at, um, I think I do a little cut back here, which is all right. So yeah, your arms are much more. Look at my hand positioning. If you compare that wrist, yeah, compared to what what yours are doing, and then. Um, yeah, but it's a bit of a more centralised on the screen. Sorry. Look at the angle of my board compared to yours. Yeah, well mine was still on the water. Yeah, so, so that's the difference between flat. Now, if if you just left me there with no speed, I would fall over. Yeah. Okay, but because I've got speed and my head's facing down the wave and I'm looking where I'm going, that is how I get pulled through the turn. Um, and if you just go slow mo on this little guy. Okay, so I'm, I'm twisting more than you, I'm seeing more than you. Um, and then again, my, my angle change gets the board. I do hit this one a little bit flat, I get a bit stuck. But there the board pivots nicely, comes around, and I'm, I'm back into my takeoff position. Yeah. Yeah, so you can see that, that nice figure eight. Um, now, because I, I'm hitting my, my targets, it means in this position I can relax because the wave's pushing me, the yeah. wave's giving me speed, so it starts to look a lot more effortless then. Yeah. I'm still find the one, there was, let me see if it's here, there was a little clip of where I start to go on rail, but then it involved me, it involved me falling off. Oh, oh I miss days like that. 
Yeah, it's been a bit of a small winter for us. This is this is from like two years ago, I think. Oh, okay, right. So it's, it's not on that video. Let me go full screen. I'll try and find the other the other clip a second. Um, right. So, so got a review from gallery. You just say something for a second. Well, every time we have a little epiphany in the water, um, we like to we, we normally discuss it on the car ride back home, yeah. and then we get here and we set up and go, okay, how can we tell the audience what we felt in the water today, and and how can we um, sort of inspire them to go out and to try feel that. Ah, oh, there it is. There it is. So if we go back, this is right. about two years ago, right? Yeah, so, so this is two years ago, and this is, so this is Clay still trying to get me to go more on rail. Now, in order for me to go on rail, this whole idea of, sorry, I need to speak, but I just want to just cover this. That idea of when you, to go on rail, Feeling you like need to feel like you're falling. And in order to need to feel like you're falling, you, the one thing that I've had to do is to fall off a lot. Yeah. But so many people, are, they, they don't want to fall off because they don't want to look like they're wasting away. No, they're just fighting this, for balance. And this, that and the other. But I think without me falling off as much as I did, and I'm not making excuses for falling off all the time, <laughs> but without me falling off as much as I did, I would never have got to that point where I then went, oh, okay, I'm meant to feel like this before I can then do this. Yeah. So... We're going to bring up the iPad here. Did you want to say something quickly, actually, first? Yes, there was, there was two things. We were sitting in the lineup today laughing at people falling off. Okay, let's, let's just make that not sound quite so hard. We, well, we, weren't, for, we weren't laughing well, at, at, at people falling off. It was for the reason off. of why they were falling off. Yeah. They were standing up on a wave, going down the wave, trying to balance, but they were taking off, so the, they were actually accelerating. They were falling over backwards. Yeah. And you even said it looks like someone had tied their ankles together. Yeah it, was, yeah, it was like they were in um, ankle, ankle shackles. So, so they stood up, their feet went together, and then they just went backwards. The board shot out, and then they, they, they just fell straight, straight back. Okay, so, so what's actually happening is that they're standing up straight, but then, then the board's accelerating from under them. Had they have leaned forward? And this is what I'm saying to you, though, about people put... Pe when, that, when that feeling comes in, the natural reaction is to go, Control. whoa, whoa, I need to do this. But we almost need to lean into it. And this yes. is the whole idea of when we do that turn... Lean into to, it. ...to get on rail, we need to lean into it. And you will fall off initially. So let's, let's have a look here. So this, again, this is a few years ago. We're going slow motion. Let's go super slow. Go super slow. Okay. Now, when I played this to you, I said, Ant, I love this. You're on rail there on the bottom turn. Yeah, I, I hated this because I fall. But then Clay said, but you need to fall. So look at the angle of the board. Way more on rail. Look at where your bums, look where your body is. Yeah. And you start accelerating, and then you and give then, up. And then I fell because I was because I started freaking out about being off balance. And but, I, I say to you that that's some of the best surfing you've ever done. But it is that that we need. It is this falling off that we need to start doing. Had I not started falling off like this, I don't think that we've ever got to the bit that I got to today. No. Because I would never have played around with that feeling of falling. I'd have always tried to stay in balance. So I'll just show you, just show you again. So rail turn. Not, not a tail turn, that was rail. I, I love this moment, I'll tell you when to hit pause, and pause. You're not standing on your board. Arms are still a little bit flat. If you got your wrist up, that would fix that. Yeah. But um, when you watch the pro, look, look at the spray that you're throwing. Look, look at, okay, this is really interesting. Remember before there was spray flat and then you could see the board actually bogging? Yeah. All right. You just went, uh, look at my arrow, you went rail to rail. Look at how short this little transition period is there. Okay, yeah. Do you see how you shortened yeah. that? Which means you've got way more speed. Yeah. So that's one of the cues. And it, it almost looks like a figure eight if you look at the spray because I'm excited about this. Look at the spray. So here's your figure eight, all right? Um, look at that spray line there and look at this spray line here. Do you see how it yeah. makes a figure eight with your spray? And then your transition, your crossover, is there, and it's tiny. Yeah. Right, that's better surfing. Okay. Like that. Uh, we are going um, to show you some Mick Fanning clips, just so that we can, so that, so we can put a little bow on this with, with, with someone demonstrating how to do it absolutely yeah. uh, amazingly. But if anybody's got any questions about the about the rail surfing, then then, then chuck them in to the into the comments, and I'll I'll go through them in just a moment. Uh, 
Quick couple of things. One, if you have just tuned in, make sure that you check out the most recent video that we posted. It is the Ombi tale all about Karen, who started surfing when she was 50, caught the best wave of her life at the age of 68 over at the trip that you did in Nicaragua. Yeah. Um, amazing, and, amazing video. And it's about taking risks. Yeah. She, she, was, she, was, she, she was wonderful in that. As scared as she was, she was like, I'll give it a go. Yeah. And um, had caught the best wave of her life. Yeah. The other thing as well, which we have kind of mentioned in this video, was my understanding of boards. I honestly believe that my, although I've got to surf a lot of different boards, when we did the Buy the Right Board course, that was when I sort of really started to understand a lot more about it. So if you haven't checked out the yeah. uh, Buy the Right Board course, then then ombi.co, ombi head over to, to, the, to the website there, join the community, and I think you'll get... Uh, Access so th to, this is something that to some you, of the courses for a short period of time. This is something with premium stuff. that you need to understand with boards. A high performance board is simply more responsive. So what that means, if you've got bad technique, it responds quicker to your bad technique. Mm -hmm. It's not going to make you a better surfer. So you almost want to ride a less responsive board, work on your technique. And when you get frustrated with the board because the board's not then responding, it's then time to change and then the board will respond better to good technique. Yeah. Okay, so that's super yeah. important to know that. So we're going to show you Mick, Mick, Mick Fanning now. The one thing that I really hope that you're taking away from this is, first of all, Play's telling you how to surf more on rail. But what I want you to take away from what I'm saying is that I had to embrace the falling yeah. in order to feel something different. And when you do feel something different, it's such a cool feeling. Uh, it's absolutely amazing. But it did, it did mean that I had, to, I had to consistently fall off to get used to this idea of I being off balance. I used to get balance. so mad with you because you'd play it so safe. Yeah. And I was like, Ant, just go up, hit the lip. But you're like, oh. you're, you're constantly wanting to ride the wave to the end without taking any risk. Yeah. Yeah, I've changed now, though. Oh, no, it's, it's been huge. I'm just learning like the journey that we are on. I, I almost want to tell a story of you. So I, I, am, <laughs> gonna, I am going to tell the story. So, so this morning when we were down surfing at Diva, there was one really nice wave that came in. I, I happened to be in the right position for the wave. So I caught the wave. Clay didn't, didn't think that I was going to make it. And you started to paddle for that wave because you didn't think I was going to make it like make it down and come around the section. Yeah, I was, I was and, you, and you were full, full like going to drop in on me. Yeah. And then I, I called Clay off from dropping in on me. So I'm very proud of myself for that moment today. But, uh, but that, 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 was, that was interesting. Anyway, let's bring up the, let's bring up the iPad. Okay. And okay. It's, going, it's, it's going to Mick Fanning. I don't know which turn you wanted to see, so it's going to play from the beginning, I think. Look at this. Lean twist. <sighs> All right. Here we go. It's, it's worth just having a... So... Oh, oh. That, 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 let's slow know that. that, let's go back in time. That's, my turn this morning was not like that, but however, however, it felt like that inside my head, inside my surfing brain, I felt like I was turning like Mick Fanning. Okay, so right now, he's not standing his board, he's leaning, so he, yeah. he's missing an action, you can't even see him. All I want you to do is look at his hand, okay, watch the hand placement, so up, open, look at the, the wrist there, all the way around on the hand. And he's seeing so, and then he just stomps that around. It's absolutely beautiful. He's looking down the line, <laughs> chin up. Okay, so he's already seen the next zone. But he's yeah. relaxed. Yeah, he's so he's relaxed. Like, oh, okay, lean. He's seeing where he wants to hit it. Okay, let's see the twist on this thing. So watch the back arm come around. Look at the hand placement there. Oh, look at that thing. Absolutely nuts. Let's just leave it at that. All right. So anybody, anybody who's about to go out surfing, we're going to jump into some questions in a, moment, in a moment. Anybody who's about to go out surfing, or they're going to be surfing, got the weekend coming up in a, in a, in a day or so. If they're going to go surfing this weekend, and they're going, right, okay, I watched the Ombi Live about surfing on rail. What is the one thing that you want them to go out into the water and just so give it a go? Hopefully this sticks in your head. Use your wrists to twist. So wrist and twist. So basically bank your wrist, follow it with a twist. Okay, wrist and twist. Yeah, cool. Um, right, okay, we're going to go back through the comments pretty quick here. Uh, we have got to log off in 10 minutes time because I've got, got a meeting that I need to go and get to. 
Um, however, I did want to share. We're back on the live. Yes, we're, we're trying to do it live um, as much as possible. We're trying to do it live every single week, as long as I'm not traveling around. Well, it's, it's almost when we have a, I wanted to call it a brain fart moment, but yeah. like a, an in-water epiphany. An in-water epiphany, um, <laughs> and we're trying to have one of those every single week. Um, well, I've been watching you guys on your YouTube channel and currently went on holiday to Nuki. Oh, I love Nuki. I found my surfing improved so much just by implementing simple things like the coffee cup. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, yeah coffee cup. Well, coffee now cup from the, the coffee way. cup. Okay, so basically with the coffee cup, Rob, on your bottom turn, you want to fill the water up so, so your hand goes that way as you fill up the water. Then you go to the top turn and you pour it out. Yeah. Okay, so you're basically just following the water flow because it goes up the wave and you pour it out and that will make you go heel edge, toe edge, heel edge, toe edge. So the, the fill the coffee, empty the coffee. So next holiday in Nuki, spill your, like, tip, tip your coffee out. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Corin's on, morning. Morning, morning, morning Corin. Corin. Just watching, have you seen it live? Yep, excellent. Nice to see you, Nathan. San, San Angelo. Yeah, great new film on Karen. Yes, as I know I've mentioned this twice already, but I'm going to mention it one more time before we finish. The, 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 the last video that we posted on YouTube before this one, right now, make sure you check it out. It's an Omni tale all about Karen, who caught her best wave at the age of 68, proving that you're never, you're never too old to, to enjoy surfing. Um, okay, just picked up my first board at 31 years old in Texas. They have one to three foot beach breaks, and I picked up a five box 7-Eleven with a wingtail shaped by Hank Warner. Nice, nice, Nathan. Enjoy, mate. Sounds good. Let's know how it goes. This is all very great, true and helpful technical information. But, oh, but, that cancels out all the great stuff you've said before, by the way. The word but cancels out anything beforehand. I'm wondering if 7 or 8 the great surfers of that era. Oh, 70s and 80s, sorry. The yeah. great surfers of that era. Were they aware of all this information? Now, we've, 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 we've talked about this before, haven't we? Because of the way that the no. boards were shaped, they had to do more tick-tacky. So, so back then, they, they were thinking of more of a planing board. Where, so the flatter it was, the, the more it planed. That's where the thinking was, okay? Um, oh, okay, it does carry on. Also, they, they had like bigger like single fins and so on. So they didn't think that they needed to turn more than a 90 degree angle. Mm. So you'd go up, stomp the tail, do a 90 degree tail, and then whoa, plane down the hill again. Yeah. Whereas now it's about putting it on rail and the curve of the board helps you accelerate through the water. So the understanding now is the more turning that I do, the faster I travel through the water because it reduces friction. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, done the hand position ones. Uh, someone's saying that they call it cobra hands. However you want to call it, whatever works for you. Cobra Kai. Oh, here we go. Did my first backside cutback the other day. And you guys in my head in the lineup. <laughs> 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 sorry, sorry, sorry to invade. <laughs> sorry to invade your surf. Uh, okay, here we go. One weird thing is I'm more likely to surf on rail backside, not so much front side. Maybe because leaning over your head, uh, your hillside is more difficult. Yeah, I, I think there's a little bit difference between front side and back side. Well, Can you elaborate? Yeah, when you go back side, because you can't see it, the simple rotating the shoulders to, to look at it mm. makes your, your head and everything pivot. And that kind of puts the board on rail. And it's the same thing that you should be doing on your, um, your front side cut back is your back side bottom turn. Okay, yeah. Okay, so that being off balance. Um, remember I said you're not standing on your board. You want to do the same thing on your bottom yeah. turn. So th I think they're already doing it. They're just probably not seeing it as the same turn on the front side, mm. top turn. Yeah, I've, I've always found that if I go back side, I feel like my turns are more... They're probably not at all, but they feel more. Whereas front side, I feel like I'm more drawn to do cutbacks. Whereas on the back side, I feel like I, I can... I'd do that a bit more. I just, I don't know. Anyway, I'll shut up. Let's go into the next comment. Have you guys, great information. Thanks for sharing. No problem Thanks, at all. Okay. Uh, what have we got here? Great. Now I understand why I fall, fall out after my turn, top turn on the wave. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Let's do the first t-shirts. Yes. Awesome. There nice. Is, there, is, there is merch out there. Does small wave surfing on rail change, uh, change a lot? Like Huntington Beach last week. Those were tiny. Yes, it does change. Um, if you ride a bicycle too slow, you're not going to lean on the turn, you'll just fall over. So you're going to almost do the twist. Okay. So if you're surfing small waves and you, you don't have a lot of speed, you're going to stay more on top of the wave and you're going to use a lot of twists 
to try to get the board to go. So your fins are, are moving. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a different type of generating of speed. Uh, but as soon as there's any punch in the wave or any speed that you are getting, you want to go to the rail rather than the fin. It's going to look longer, smoother, more powerful. Yeah, perfect. Bjorn says, really helpful. Awesome, glad it's helpful. What's the best simulation uh, of feeling on rail? Surf skating ramps. Yeah, I'd say surf skating ramps because you, you need to... Look, you'd never go around the ramp and stay, stand straight up. The skateboard just fall out. Mm. So you, you do get inverted. So the more inverted you are, um, the more you can kind of train that feeling <laughs> of, of being off balance. You're going to like this one. So unless you're in a barrel some, or, or something, your body weight should never be right over your board. I think this links back to your quote, which you've said so many times, is surfboards were not meant to be stood on. No, uh, I, I don't think that's right. You don't think what's right? That, unless you're in the barrel or something, your body weight should never be right. Okay, yes, correct. Because if you're taken off, you want your weight over the front foot. Mm. Sometimes on the turns, if you're going vertical, you want to wait on the back foot, otherwise you're going to shoot off the wave, and you're going to stomp it and then pivot. Um, when you're bottom turning, your weight's over the towage rail. When you're turning, your weight's over the... So you, you, you're basically shifting your center of mass to get the board to pivot to do whatever it wants to do. When you learn how to surf, you, you're trying to balance over yeah. that center point, but then you're surfing flat. Can I ask one question on that? And hopefully this isn't going to take us on too much of a tangent because we do need to wrap things up in a second. Okay. Longboarding. Is it, is it different than with longboarding? Because you see people longboarding and they, and they are stood up straight on the board. They're walking up and down the board. Then they might walk, walk back and then they might do like a pivot turn by standing on the tail. But they're, they're I, effectively stood I on would top like of the board. to answer this differently. Okay. Okay. What happens when you surf finless and you got your weight sensed over the board? Well, it's got straight towards the beach. Okay, so I've got no control. Yeah. Okay, so by putting your weight over the rail, what happens then? It engages, and then I can whoo. Okay. So surely that tells you that by distributing your weight wherever you want to go, it gives you the control over the board. But if you try balance over centre, all right, you're not telling the board to go anywhere or do anything. Yeah. If I yeah, if I'm just over the board finless. I've got, I've got no control, I just skid all over the place. Well, let, let's change the word you've got no control. You're not initiating anything. You're at the mercy of the wave. Yeah. But when you initiate your head in a direction, right, you're signaling to the board to go there. Yeah. Yep. Cool, I like that. I, I, I did like that comment. Um, okay, just got in from surfing um, in oh, Lombok. Lombok. Fixing your guys. Okay, perfect. Awesome. Glad you found it helpful. Hello. Uh, in my top 10, I realised my arms were not vertical enough. Really worked on reining my back arm nice. and dropping front arms. Turns felt yeah. so much more powerful. Awesome. Good stuff. How do we change our approach to surf on rail on longer boards, mid-length, compared to high-performance boards? Okay, so the only difference on a long board is you need a bit more space. So... Stop trying to force a long board to surf like a short board. Mm -hmm. And then if you just gently lean on it, don't force the long board. It will glide and it'll look really, really smooth. Yeah. So what it is, it's more about a pattern recognition, seeing which part of the wave the long board's going to fit. And then don't try to force it. Um, okay. As soon as you force the board, it's probably going to back foot stop. Okay. Have you answered your question? Um, are you planning on making a workshop in Southern California? Uh, we're going to be in Southern California in about two months' time because we're going to the Wayful Conference. But that's, that's, that's not for a workshop, though. That's yes, they're doing the Wayful Conference. It's, look, we don't have any headquarters set up there, um, no. and we don't have a facility to do it. And things, things that are outside of Australia, um, I'm going to say it's just, just stay tuned because we, we're, we're always looking at what we can do differently and what we can start to add into into the, the Omni program. The, 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 the best way to stay up to date is to go and jump into the app, jump yep. into, the, into the community there because we will announce any trips or any workshops or anything like that. Well, they'll be announced in the, in the app first and foremost. Um, 3 a.m. here in South Africa. Either, either either go to bed or or don't get up so early. <laughs> yeah, or just w stay away from the two hours and go for a surf. Okay, I'm gonna do. Okay, three more and we're done. Yeah, I'm gonna do. Yeah, right. 
So if you can answer this one. I'm five foot looking for my first surfboard. I want a short board with the swallow tail. What height and brand uh, of the top, off the top of your head should it get? So not, a, not enough information. First of all, mm. why do you want a swallow tail? So do you know that with the swallow tail, you get more drive and more speed, less turning? So mm. is that what you want? Um, secondly, what kind of waves do you want to surf? Um, is it beach break? Is it um, like J Bay running down the line? Or is it pipeline? Like, um, when you think of brands like Channel Islands, the waves in Channel Islands are normally quite shitty. Mm. So they're going to have slightly fuller rails. Um, if you yeah. think about like um, Sharp Eye, you've got guys like Philippe Toledo riding them. So they're going to want a bit more lower nafia rails. There's too many variables. There's so many variables. The best thing, the best thing to do is, is to ask a, lo a local shaper. Well, actually riding. okay, have you gone through by the right board course that we've yeah. done? That'll answer a lot of questions. So jump onto the Omni, look up by the right board course. Um, yeah. Then if you've got any questions, you can always hit us up. Yeah, cool. Um, if you want to go try, the, try it down this weekend, this one here, I can answer I can answer this question. Which do we use? Now, oh, look, I've just realised something. Every time we do this, there we go, that's what we use. Look above my head. There we go. Pacto. Yeah, Pacto. Pacto. That's, that's the software that we're using to break down footage. I never realised that we covered up the Pacto logo. Thank you for, um, for putting that out. I mean, put it over there. Yeah. So I might, for future, I'm going to put it over there. And now you'll always see the Pacto logo as well. Cool. Yeah. Excellent. And bring us back up full screen. Anyone have issues? Anyone have issues with knee making dents? on the board during pop-up? Yes, and this is supposed to happen. So think of a good pair of shoes. Normally the shoes that wear in, right, they feel really comfortable. So when your board starts to dent, it wears in and it gets a hell of a lot more comfortable. Mm. So if I have a board that doesn't dent, I don't like it. You actually it, like pre-shape some of your boards with, I, with, with they're not dense, but like a chest concave into yeah. the board. And it's amazing, it feels different as soon as you stand up. So the, the close, the thicker the board is, the more your feet are away from the surface of the water and the less you feel. So the, the closer it goes, the more you feel. Mm. So as your board starts denting, you almost start feeling more of the wave. Yeah. All yeah. right, we're going yeah. we're to we're power through these, these last few. Dents are good. I think everyone's pumped to try out these tips. Indeed, they are. Come to Costa Rica. When Clay says we're going to Costa Rica, I'm going with him because Costa Rica is something that's on my list of so things we, I want to I'm going to Nicaragua again next year, probably April, but it's going to be more for beginners and low intermediates. Okay, I'm out from Chile. Thank you, guys. No problem at all. Uh, okay, this is the last one that we're going to do. So don't... You can type more comments to help us in the algorithm and boost the video, but this is the last question that we are going to answer. Is the Fingal Stin, Fin still the best way to learn rail work? No. It never was, was it? No. So... If you go on rail, there's no fin in the water, your board slides out. That's why single fin surfers never surfed on rail. Single fin is, is trying to do that, isn't it? But when they started going to twin fins, they started to learn about rail surfing. <laughs> and they got shorter boards, which means they started to do figure eights. We've got a celebrity in the midst. He's a the, celebrity. Okay, okay, carry on, just finish explaining that, well, and then I'm going to bring the celebrity up. Well, the guys, on, they used to go up, 90 degree turn, and ride down and plane on single fins. Yeah. You never really see them doing big figure eights. Um, yeah. Okay. Urban Surf probably will be in the mix. Don't know exactly the dates yet. Stay tuned. As I say, go to the go to the app. And finally, I know I've mentioned it, and I wasn't going to mention it again, but ah, I am. All right. Karen Miller is also awesome. so, so, Karen. So, so Karen in in the comments here below below us. Karen is the star of our most recent video that we posted less than twenty four hours ago uh, on the on on the YouTube channel. So make sure that you check out Karen. She caught the wave of her life at sixty eight. She started surfing at fifty. Uh, just watch the video. You'll be you'll you, you'll you'll sit there beaming with a smile the she's, entire the way through the video. She's Instagram famous. She's nearly got a million followers. Yep, yeah. our, our, our highest rating uh, in, in Instagram reel clip. So so yeah, we have a celebrity in our midst here this morning uh, with Karen Miller. But that is it from us, guys. I hope that you enjoyed this one. I can see that you're going to go out there and try out these tips. Uh, hopefully, you have a moment like I had this morning because I am still frothing from it and I'm gutted that I've got to go to a meeting because otherwise I'll probably go surfing again. <laughs> But uh, yeah, that's it from us, guys. Thanks, Thanks for tuning in. How's that? That was we're tuned that in. Was, that was that's synchronized. Synced. There so we go. Good. Anyway, <laughs> see you guys.